Have you been decorating your home in the English country style here and there? You've built up some confidence and you are ready for a total room transformation. If so, this is the visit for you. In today's video, you and I will take a dark and dated, rather cramped 1960s dining room to a breath of fresh air straight from the English countryside and I can hardly wait to share it with you. Hi friends, I'm Rachel, creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Stone Cottage Home where we cultivate the art of home from our heart with our hands. Today, with paint, antique furniture, wallpaper, and good old fashioned elbow grease, we will transform a heavy, uninspiring space to a garden fresh English cottage dining room on a budget. Back in January, Matt and I shared with you our remodeling and makeover plans for this year. We decided to focus on the three main common areas being the living room, dining room, and kitchen. Since all three of these rooms can be seen at one time, the design had to be cohesive. First up was the living room. Here is a before and after shot. We made great strides in the living room and then turned our attention to the dining room. I'll show you pictures of before and we'll talk about what worked and what didn't. Then I'll walk you through our design process as we choose paint, wallpaper, furnishings, etc. This dining room is a good size and has two nice windows looking out into the backyard. The gorgeous chandelier came with the house and I have often said that when we move, it moves with us. My three goals for this space are to visually expand the room, making it feel bigger, to lighten and brighten the space, and to create that English countryside feeling where there's a blur between the indoor and outdoor living. Let's step back in time and assess the dining room back in January before remodeling started. I love this dining space and we host here regularly. Our goal is to visually expand the room, lighten, brighten, remove that heavy, cramped feeling, and update everything. We will begin by reducing the amount of heavy, dark woodwork with paint on the wainscoting trim and doors, and then remove the heavy, dark hutch, which has affectionately become known as the Beast since it houses all of the tea party and hosting dishes. Now it's time to remove the furniture, including the beast, so we can prepare the walls for paint and wallpaper. The wall directly behind the hutch is heavily textured, so it will need to be sanded and mudded repeatedly to smooth it in preparation for wallpaper. The adjoining wall had a border on the top and plenty of little holes that will need to be filled. All the furniture is removed, I've emptied the beast, and am using this as an opportunity to assess and purge my tea party things. It's amazing how emptying a room can help you rethink a space. This already feels bigger and lighter. Now the real work begins. Matt starts with the first layer of mud. Matt works quickly with a sure, confident hand, and we both are very glad we only have one wall that's heavily textured. This process is time consuming and tedious as each layer of mud has to dry before you can sand and apply the next layer. Matt is so patient to let me give it a try. The kitchen has become a construction zone. This is a few days later. The walls are now primed, smoothed, and completely ready for paint and wallpaper. Plus all of the woodwork, trim, and wainscoting has been sanded down in preparation for primer. This is such great progress. 
I don't know about you, but once I see this kind of progress, I feel the excitement mounting and the motivation building. Matt and I decided that since we were already making a mess, we might as well make a bigger mess and get it over with at the same time. So we are sanding and mudding and priming walls in both the living room and the dining room. You can see the lovely layer of dust that is now covering my house. There is still nothing as affordable and transformative as paint. Here you see Matt beginning with the primer. We chose to use the color Universal Khaki by Sherwin-Williams. I chose this paint color for several reasons. First, I've used it in two other places in our home and I know that I love it. It is great to find your tried and true colors. Second, this color is in our home palette so it will give a sense of continuity with the rest of the house. Also, Universal Khaki is a soft muted neutral which will ground the space and support the colors and pattern in the wallpaper. When you see the wallpaper I chose, you might notice this Universal Khaki isn't actually in the wallpaper, but the colors in the paper are also fairly muted, so your eye is tricked into seeing the paint color in the paper. We are now ready for wallpaper. Choosing wallpaper is not only a big decision design-wise, but it can also be one of the most expensive parts of a remodel. Here are some factors that help me choose a great wallpaper that I know I will be happy with for years to come. The first question I ask in narrowing down my decisions is will this wallpaper be a feature or a background layer in my design style? For this dining room, I really want the wallpaper to be a feature. So these neutral, very quiet wallpapers are easy to eliminate. The next question to ask is if the wallpaper choice reflects the feeling or style that you're going for in your space. For this dining room, I am looking for garden fresh English countryside feelings. Some of these that I am eliminating have an Asian flair, they are metallic, or they have a Craftsman William Morris vibe to them. Lovely, but not what I'm going for here. Another important consideration is color. I'm keeping in mind my goal of creating a space that feels bigger and brighter, and this helps me narrow down colors that are too dark or not in our home color palette. This one is too pink and looks like a girl's bedroom. This one's slightly purple. Another girly one. This one is a bit too grayed and muted. This one is almost completely gold. This last consideration is where the magic comes in. I've learned from studying English country wallpaper that when pattern is used, the space automatically opens up. Oddly enough, the larger the scale, the larger the room can feel. To keep a pattern from being overwhelming, I choose light, soft, muted, and airy colors. I also stay away from really tight or busy patterns. For an even deeper dive in how to choose the perfect wallpaper, we have created a guide and it will be linked for you in the description box below. All three of these lovely contenders have the elements I've been looking for. Birds, flowers, leaves, and blue-green and calm neutral palettes. As I filtered through the wallpaper samples with these questions, my decision was narrowed down to a classic Laura Ashley design called Elderwood in Natural. This is an English design and Laura Ashley is a British designer. This pattern has a clear English garden countryside feeling with blooms, berries, and birds. The colors are in our home color palette with the green leaves being the same grassy green pesto paste color we've already used in other areas of our home. Trusting your gut when choosing styles you like does pay off. 
While the scale of this wallpaper is larger, the repeat is wide and airy, giving your eye a space to rest. Plus, the design goes beautifully with the colors in the living room. I had this wallpaper in my cart for a few weeks before being notified it had gone on sale. That was all I needed to pull the trigger and order it. It was worth the wait. With the wallpaper hung, Matt installs the first layer of our window dressing. These cordless woven wood shades are made from bamboo and custom fit for your window. This company, Blinds.com, has been great to work with. We've ordered from them several times before. Once we got a shade that was crooked and when we let them know, they sent us a replacement at no cost. These sturdy handmade blinds are gorgeous and I highly recommend them. If these bamboo blinds interest you, you will find a link in the description box below. Initially, we painted the windowsill in a creamy ivory lace, but after the wallpaper was hung, the windowsill seemed to make more of a statement than blending in. So, I repainted it to match the wainscoting in universal khaki. P.S. Research your wallpaper tape carefully. This one actually peeled up part of the paper when we removed it. Take a look at the dramatic effect that a wallpaper can have. This space is now so bright, happy, and cheerful that I can hardly wait to get the furniture moved in and celebrate with a special breakfast. First, a few finishing details to add polish to the room. Do you notice how much those socket covers stand out? I would like to get some that are paintable. Matt found these paintable outlet covers by Hampton Bay in the pattern Sovereign, which has this nice little decorative trim. My first step was to give them a good coat of primer and then to paint them in the universal khaki so that they would blend in with our wainscoting. Taking care of finishing details like this can be tiresome, especially when you're ready to finish a project, but they make such a difference in the outcome of the room as a whole. The same is true for these old rusted floor grates. When planning the renovations for the dining room and living room, Matt and I sat down and talked about what we would do ourselves and what we would hire out. We had a limited budget and a limited time frame. It made sense for us to do the painting and the smaller things like hanging blinds and the finishing touches. But as this is a main room, we decided to go ahead and have a professional hang the wallpaper. We both really loved the results. We were able to stay in budget and on schedule. If you're keen on wallpaper, friend, like I am, but can't stand the thought of nail holes in your beautiful paper, here's our best hack for how to hang art with no visible damage to your wallpaper. Cut a small V into your paper with a sharp blade, then lift the paper to expose the sheetrock below. We measured for our hanger and slightly adjusted downward to land inside the pattern of the wallpaper and not on the more visible blank background. Simply lift the flap and nail in your hanger. When you are ready to change up your art, remove the hanger, take a dab of super glue and put it right underneath the flap, press it down and it will disappear seamlessly. Now we're ready to play with furniture. Initially, I put back our farmhouse table and chair set. This nice, sturdy set was a generous gift we've enjoyed for many years. Once I had seen this space empty and reviewed the before pictures, I realized that this dining set was oversized for the space. Plus, the chunky farmhouse style, the honey oak finish, and the tall back chairs were not to my taste as they blocked the view out the window and covered the pattern on the wallpaper. This set of six antique chairs on Marketplace caught my eye. I loved the simple lines, the touch of carving, and the darker finish, as well as the smaller scale and low back profile. <laughs> Between the trunk, the back seat, and my lap, we managed to get all six antique chairs home in the car. My friend Robin, who is an interior designer, came for a visit and suggested we place the 1930s antique buffet from Matt's grandpa in the dining room. Even though now this seems like an obvious decision, sometimes it takes a fresh set of eyes to see things in a new way. 
The buffet says dining room and makes the space feel more intentional. What a perfect fit. During this project, I was also hunting an antique table on Marketplace, then remembered that we had the matching 1930s table that goes with the buffet. Not only is this table perfect in scale, but it complements the chairs so nicely. Plus, it has wonderful memories. At some point, I will find the perfect fabric to recover the chair seats. But for now, I am loving how the space is coming together. Now for a little shopping. I have a short list and a friend of mine introduced me to a new secondhand shop. Here I'm hoping to find a vintage or antique lamp that would look good on one side of the buffet. This one is a nice option. I like the brass. It is vintage. It's a good price, also further discounted, but I'm not really sure I like the three tall candlesticks. Let's keep looking. I know you're dying to know what this guy cost. Any guesses? Let's see, 500. You know, that's really a steal compared to a trip to Africa. This little lamp looks promising. I really like the candlestick brass base. The top of it has what is called a baffle that will soften the light, perfect for creating ambiance. Plus, it has my favorite little pull chains. And it's also a good price. Sold. Let's get this lamp home, clean it up, try it out on the buffet, and then friend, let's tour this new to us English country dining room. Matt and I both are very pleased with how the dining room has turned out. It has become a light, happy, peaceful space that harmoniously blends with the rest of the house and we enjoy spending time here. We hope this transformation has inspired you to bring your design dreams to life. Step out and try something new like wallpaper and cultivate the art of your home. Friend, I'm so glad you decided to join us today. If creating the English country style is endearing to you and feels like home, be sure to subscribe because we have already plunged deep into remodeling our dark and dated 1960s honey oak kitchen 
into an old world English country style kitchen with all the charm. I have so enjoyed today's visit and until next time, take care. Hi YouTube friends. Today, we're going to be talking about our dining room. What to say? <laughs> Start here. <Okay. laughs> well, sometimes we can lose that. Okay, you ready? Ready. Action. Oh, wait, you say that. Action. What? <laughs>